In this video, we'll go over the best monsters with 4,000 or more attack, a threshold that's rarely met by monsters and is generally reserved for strong boss monsters. And at number 10, we have Obelisk the Tormentor. Obelisk is one of the three god cards and one of the few monsters in the game that's the divine beast type and has the divine attribute, as those are basically just attributes and types given to the god cards and their support. And of the three god cards, Obelisk is the only one that's actually decent. Well, besides Spear Mode, if you count that as a god card. And Obelisk did actually see competitive play in the past. But you'd be surprised in which deck Obelisk saw the most success, as it was one of the best decks in the game's history. Obelisk the Tormentor used to be a side deck addition to full power dragon rulers since that deck relied on targeting with their Xseeds monsters that removed cards from the field, and it could easily get out three tributes, and since Dragon Rulers were facing so many other Dragon Ruler decks back in those days, they would actually side in Obelisk as a really good counter to other Dragon Ruler decks. Because Obelisk himself cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects, he requires three tributes to be normal summoned, and it can tribute two monsters to destroy all of your opponent's monsters, at the cost of it not being able to attack that turn. So all of this is pretty good stuff, but it's generally held back by the fact that it requires three tributes and takes up your normal summon at that. Although full power dragon rulers didn't really need their normal summon and could easily spit out enough monsters to get out both this card and fulfill the requirements for its effect to tribute two monsters to destroy all of your opponent's monsters. And then there was very little enemy dragon ruler decks could do to stop Obelisk except bring out their own. Obelisk also saw occasional play in Frog Monarch decks, although after Dragon Rulers got banned, Obelisk hasn't seen any competitive play. But hey, you never know. No one expected it to see play in Dragon Rulers either, so it might randomly make a reappearance in the future. And at number 9, we have Malefic Cyber and Dragon. This is one of the easiest to summon monsters from your hand that has the highest attack, as all you have to do is fulfill two conditions to bring this card out from your hand. One of them is for a field spell card to be on the field, and you just need to banish a copy of Cyber and Dragon from your extra deck. And these are two pretty easy conditions to fulfill, which is why it also has two negative effects, where you can only control one of these on the field at a time, and other monsters can't attack except this one. So if you need an easy to bring out level 10 monster with more than 4,000 attack, Malefic Cyber and Dragon is a really good card to use in those situations as all you have to do is banish a monster from your extra deck, which makes it one of the better malefic monsters, as you don't have to play dead cards in your main deck, like you would have to do if you played malefic rainbow dragon for example. Now, malefic cyber and dragon doesn't really see competitive play nowadays, but it was a very popular addition to gravekeeper decks, as they have a really good field spell card that was all about controlling and shutting down your opponent, and they kind of lacked any big beaters in the older days. So, they would just supplement that with the Malefic Cyber and Dragon, who could beat over pretty much anything and could be brought out pretty easily. And at number 8, we have Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. This is the only non-effect monster on this list, and the reason this card still sees competitive play today is precisely because it's a high attack non-effect monster. You see, when this card originally first came out, there was a really cheesy deck that would special summon it directly from the extra deck with Cyberstein, and then equip him with Megamorph in order to attack for more than 8,000 points of damage. Once Cyberstein got banned, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon didn't really see any play, because it's a hard to bring out vanilla monster essentially from the extra deck. But then a new archetype came out which supported non-effect monsters, and that archetype has a counter trap card called Fists of the Unrivaled Tenyi, which is a really good Omni Negate, where as long as you control a non-effect monster, you can negate the effect of basically any card. And it also has an additional effect, where if this face down card is destroyed by your opponent, you can special summon a non-effect monster from your extra deck. And since Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon is the strongest non-effect monster that can go in the extra deck, it's the best target for Fists of the Unrivaled Tenyi. Although that doesn't mean all Tenyi decks play Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, it's just a really good option to bring out, as getting a free 4500 attack beat stick is not half bad, especially when it's immune to monster effects with the Tenyi Field Spell card out as well. And at number 7, we have Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon. This is another Blue Eyes card, except this time a Ritual Monster with 4000 attack, who has the effects on the field, 
where it cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects, it can inflict piercing battle damage when it attacks a defense position monster, and if it does do piercing damage, that damage is doubled. So if this card attacks into a zero defense monster, that's 8,000 points of damage, which is a one turn kill. Now this card seems kind of amazing, great protection and the possibility to win in one attack. So why doesn't this card see regular play? Mainly because it requires a lot of resources to bring out, being a ritual monster. It doesn't impact the field outside of attacking, and it's kind of easy to play around with common extra deck cards. And its protection is good, but not unbeatable. Plus, most people don't play defense position monsters very often anyway. When this card first came out in 2017, it was played a bit in a couple of pure Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon decks, and those decks just did their best to turbo this card out and did a pretty okay job at it as there's lots of ways to search this card out with Blue Eyes support. But it was always a card you kinda had to build your deck around, and it wasn't good enough for a deck to be built around it. Well, to compete with other meta decks anyway, and it could never really be splashed into another strategy. So it just kind of fell by the wayside and hasn't seen any competitive play since 2017, despite even better ritual support cards coming out in the form of the incantation archetype since then. And at number six, we have Sandion the Time Lord. Now, this is a Time Lord card, so it shares a lot of the same effects as other Time Lords, where they can't be special summoned from the deck, they return to your deck during the standby phase, you can normal summon this card without tributes if your opponent controls a monster, and it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Now, the Time Lords also have another unique effect to each of them, and most of them only have zero attack, with Sandion being unique in that it's one of the few with 4,000 attack, which is why it makes this list. And its effect is that at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, you could inflict 2,000 points of damage to your opponent. Now, this is a pretty hefty chunk of burn damage, but it doesn't seem that great, as the starting life points of a player is 8,000, and you need to resolve this effect four times in order to win, and this card only really gets its effect off once before it returns to your deck. So, how this card is used is in conjunction with two other cards in order to burn your opponent for 8,000 points of damage in one turn. There is another Time Lord called Michion the Time Lord, who has the effect that at the end of the battle phase, if this card battled, you can cut your opponent's life points in half. So if you have Michion and Sandion on the field at the same time, you can use Michion's effect first to cut your opponent's life points in half, which will reduce them to 4,000 if they were at the starting 8,000. Then Sandion will reduce it by 2,000, bringing their life points down to 2,000. And since both Sandion and Michion are both level 10 monsters, you can use them to bring out Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max, who has the effect to detach one material in order to inflict 2,000 points of burn damage to your opponent, which is the last remaining 2,000 you need in order to win in one turn. And with cards like Time Maiden and the fact that all of the Time Lords can't be destroyed by battle or card effects, it was actually pretty easy to pull off this combo, which is why a Time Lord Shadal deck saw some competitive success. And at number 5, we have Link God Dragon. This was the second Link 5 monster added to the game, and has 5,000 attack and requires 5 monsters for its Link Summon. And its effects are pretty good. While this card is on the field, it's unaffected by card effects, and can only be destroyed by battle by a Light or Divine Attribute monster. But it has a maintenance cost while on the field, where during your opponent's end phase, you have to banish 5 cards from your graveyard face down. And if you can't, then this card is sent to the graveyard. And this card also has an extra effect, where if the cards you use for its Link Summon are of Dark, Earth, Water, Fire, and Wind, then you get to destroy all cards on your opponent's side of the field when it's Link Summoned. So this card is basically like an ultimate falcon with the max attack power value of 5,000, with a maintenance cost that should be fulfilled with its materials in the graveyard. So you can keep this card out for a turn no problem, and most duels don't last very long anyway. So you don't really have to worry about the maintenance cost that much, since I think the average duel is over in less than 5 turns or something, which means having to pay the maintenance cost like 2 times if you brought it out in your first turn. And most decks can get through half their deck in a couple of turns anyway. So it's just a pretty solid Link 5 monster with good arrows that just requires way too many monsters to bring out. Honestly, the only bad thing about this card 
is the fact that it requires 5 monsters for its Link Summon. If it allowed you to also combine other Link monsters, it would be kind of overpowered, because being unaffected by all card effects is the best kind of protection a card can have. I guess that was needed to balance that out, in addition to its maintenance cost. And at number 4, we have Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut Libay. This is a rank 11 monster that can be brought out if you just rank it up from the extra deck directly on top of a rank 10 machine X Seeds monster you control. And surprisingly, this card does see competitive play every now and again, because a very popular rank 10 machine X Seeds monster is Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max, who has a really good burn effect that you can then just rank him up into Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut in order to attack over your opponent. As its other effect is, you can detach a material from this card in order to increase the attack of this monster by 2000, but only this card can attack that turn. And it also has another effect, where during the battle phase, this card can attack monsters your opponent controls, up to the number of Xyz material this card has plus one. So if you bring out Gustav Max and use its effect to burn for 2000 damage, then rank this card up on top of it, detach a material so it gains 2000 attack, it will still have one material left, so it can attack twice. So, assuming you've used Gustav Max effect to burn for 2000 damage, if your opponent has two face-up monsters on the side of the field, with 3000 or less attack each, this card can attack over both of them for more than the 6000 remaining life points as damage. And since most monsters have 3000 or less attack, this combo can win you the game most of the time if you're just able to get out two level 10 monsters. So, this card occasionally sees play in Thunder Dragon decks, as Thunder Dragon Titan is a level 10 monster. And it also sees play in Train Shadal decks, because all of the Train support cards are level 10 Earth Machine monsters. And the Earth Shadal Fusion monster is a level 10 monster. So, Shadals combo very well at Trains in order to send them directly from the deck to the graveyard with Shadal Fusion, in order to bring out their level 10 Fusion monster, who has a good effect on its own and can be used for rank 10 Xyz plays, which they can then rank up into Super Dreadnought Real Cannon Juggernaut. And at number 3, we have Shooting Quasar Dragon. This is one of the best synchro monsters you can bring out, and it was severely hampered by Link Summoning, since this card's requirements are at least 3 synchro monsters on the field. This is a level 12 monster that requires 1 tuner synchro monster, plus 2 or more non-tuner synchro monsters as its materials. So, the usual way this card is brought out is with Formula Synchron and two level 5 Synchro monsters. Or, that was the way before Link monsters came out and restricted the amount of zones you can bring out Synchro monsters to. Although, I believe with Criston Needle Fiber finally coming out to the TCG, now called Criston Halquifibrax, that should help Quasar Dragon come out a lot easier. Because what Quasar Dragon's effects are, is it can attack a number of times during the battle phase equal to the number of non-tuner monsters used for its synchro summon. So, if you go with the minimum amount of monsters, this card can attack twice during each battle phase. So if your opponent has a clear field, that's 8000 points of damage. It also has a once per turn Omni Negate, where if your opponent activates any card or effect, you can negate the activation and destroy it. And it also has a floating effect, where if this card leaves the field, you can special summon a shooting star dragon from your extra deck. And this is one of the best kinds of floating effects, as it doesn't matter how it leaves the field. And Shooting Star Dragon itself is a good synchro monster, where it has the potential to attack multiple times, you can once per turn negate the effects of a card that would destroy another card on the field, and it can banish itself in order to negate an attack, where it will then return during the end phase. So decks that were focused around just trying to bring out Shooting Quasar Dragon were actually not half bad because this one card is so good. And that's why it's also incredibly difficult to summon. And at number 2, we have Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon Dragon. This is a rank 8 monster that is kind of used as the middleman in a combo piece, where this card has the effect where you can detach one X Seeds material from this card in order to destroy one face up card your opponent controls. And then this card has an alternative summoning condition where if you control a Galaxy Eyes X Seeds monster, you can rank this card up on top of it directly from your extra deck. And this card currently sees competitive play in any deck that's able to go into level 8 monsters. Because with this, and two other Xyz monsters, you can turn any two level 8 monsters into the ability to remove three cards from your opponent's side of the field. 
As first up, what you do is you use two level 8 monsters to go into Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon. Ideally, you'll want to do this after your battle phase, but you can do it before, because Cypher Dragon's effect locks you out of attacking with any cards except this one, if you use its effect. So, what its effect is, is you can detach one material from this card to take control of one of your opponent's face-up monsters, and its name will be treated as Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon, its effects will be negated, and its attack will be set to 3000. Then, you can rank it up into Galaxy Eye's Full Armor Photon Dragon, who will then be able to destroy one card your opponent controls by detaching one of its Xyz materials. Then, you can rank it up into Galaxy Eye's Cypher Blade Dragon, who has an effect where you can detach one material to destroy any one card on the field. And it also has a floating effect, where if this card is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon from your graveyard. Now, Galaxy Eye Cypher Blade Dragon cannot be ranked up any further. So, the reason people use Galaxy Eye's Full Armor Photon Dragon is because it can both rank up on top of any Galaxy Eye's Exceeds monster and destroy a card, which it can then rank up into something else, as it doesn't have the no rank up on top of restriction. This three card combo is really good, as they can turn any two of your level 8 monsters into three monster removals of your opponents which will then leave you with a monster that can float into a 3k beat stick. And that's why Galaxy Eye's Full Armor Photon Dragon currently sees competitive play, because this is a really good two card combo, and Photon Dragon is what lets you gain the most amount of advantage from that combo, as it's the middleman between the three cards. And at number one, we have number 95, Galaxy Eye's Dark Matter Dragon. This is the only card on this list that's currently banned because its effect is too good. This card is similar to the previous spot on this list, where you can special summon it from your extra deck by ranking it on top of a Galaxy Eyes Exceeds monster. Although this card isn't a middleman like Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon Dragon, as you can't rake up any cards on top of Dark Matter Dragon. And what this card does is when this card is Exceeds summoned, you can send three dragon type monsters with different names from your deck to the graveyard, in order to force your opponent to banish three monsters from their deck. Now, there are so many good dragon type monsters with graveyard effects that both activate in the graveyard or when they're sent to the graveyard that this card can allow you to gain plus three off of its effect, while also forcing your opponent to banish three cards, I guess. And once guard dragons were released, the dragon type monsters got amazingly good support, and Galaxy Eye's Dark Matter Dragon became a little too good, as it was already really good without the guard dragons, which is why this card eventually got banned because Dragon decks can easily go into this card, as it has the exact same conditions as the previous spot on this list, and Dragon decks can easily bring out level 8 monsters. And it also has an additional effect, where you can detach an Xyz material in order to allow this card to attack two monsters during the battle phase. So with 4000 attack, it's also a really good beat stick on the field. But that's not why this card is banned, it's 100% banned because of the ability to send three dragons to the graveyard on its summon and it can easily turn into a plus three in any deck that takes advantage of it properly, which is more advantage than a pot of desires or a pot of extravagance, two very heavily played spell cards used exclusively because they allow you to go plus one. All right, and that's the end of the list. Are there any other monsters with 4,000 or more attack that should have made this list that I missed? Or do you have any more ideas for incredibly specific top tens like this one? I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. Also, did you know, only 32.5% of people who watch the videos are subscribed. So if you like these kinds of videos, you should probably subscribe to be notified when new ones come out.